The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome, my brother, my brother, me, an advice show and serial roundup rap cap for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your babyest baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Let's get to the rap gap. Yep. Is that? Rap, no, it's rap a rap gap. cap. It's like a wrap up and a recap. Okay. This is your official serial after show. Um, so where we look at the latest episode of a true crime special serial and we discuss where the clues are leading us. I, I have to say, I think it's pretty obvious at this point. But, what do oh. you think, Travis? What are your suspicions based on the recent revelations that the the Best Buy was a front this whole time? Well, I'm going to say two words, Justin. Fugue state. Fugue oh, state. I think the reporter entered into a fugue state and oh. did it. And now, like 15 years later, is like reporting on the crime. Huge twist. Shyamalan. Nailed I will it. say that is a fucking awesome cover up is like, I'm going to get to the bottom of this, but I'm having trouble getting to the bottom of it. Are you having trouble getting to the bottom of it? Or are you the bottom? Well, are she doesn't know because it was a bottom. fugue state. That's the twist. It's like she's going to like find out. And be like, You're oh my God, saying it's all yeah. to me. If she wasn't, if she wasn't uh, forgetting what happened every day whenever she fell asleep, mm-hmm. it would be so much easier for her to catch the criminal. Yep. Series finale is just going to be her like. Uh, it all of this discussion of trying to remember where these teens were makes me try make wanna makes me want to try and think where I was. Let me think. Oh my god, I can't believe. Oh my god, I'm covered in blood still. Mm-hmm. And then probably twist. the craziest thing about serial to me, a podcast that I listen to, is where is this lady finding all these teens? Yeah, uh, the she seems to know where a lot of teens hang out, and I swear to God, I haven't seen a teenager in three years. And if and if you did, how the fuck would you approach them without scaring them away, like some? Sort I want to of... talk to you about a Best Buy parking lot. No, how do you yeah, get no. teens to talk to you? The craziest thing about this show, as long as we're talking about cereal, is that the events that happened fifteen years ago, and there are people on this show that talk about what happened at a certain time. I have four pictures. Uh, in my entire mind's eye from my entire freshman year of high school 15 years ago. And one of them is me sitting in sweatpants listening to DC Talk on a portable CD player oh, in the man. band instrument closet. And in your head, it's just subtitled, Coolest Day Ever. Justin, Coolest where were you? Coolest Day Ever. Where were you on February 20th, 1995? I can tell you exactly where I was, motherfucker. Check the DC Talk. <laughs> check my DC Talk. Let me get, let me open up my Disman and you check the memory. But then he, it. you see, I was listening to Jesus Freak on that exact day. Then he opened up the Walkman. And there was no DC talk. It was Newsboys. Murder solved. <laughs> fugue state. Um, fugue state. I think that I have only listened to half of an episode, but I'm starting to think that maybe this is fiction. This is a work of fiction. And I know that you can Google it and like find the news reports saying that this, this girl was actually murdered. It's an ARG. They play But maybe those. it's a fucking ARG. And maybe I think that somebody is using this to sell us all Pringles. I think it's a Pringles ARG. <laughs> that does explain why they keep talking about it's, Pringles at the scene of the crime. Exactly. Jay is like, I. he called me up and he was like, I'm going to murder her today. <laughs> Sir, I'm going to have to, I got to ask you to stop eating those Pringles while we're taking your testimony. I'm oh, sorry, now that frust- I've popped, I just can't stop. I just cannot stop. The most frustrating, like experience of serial listening must be for the guy who used to run Circuit City because every episode is an extended commercial for Best Buy like they don't need the exposure I bet that guy is wishing on every star he can find that someone would get murdered in the parking lot of a Circuit City 15 years ago because he needs that heat yeah yeah do you know what I think the most confusing thing about serial is 
What's that, Charmy? I've listened to nine episodes, and they have yet to mention Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay, come on. Come Low on. hanging fruit is the sweetest of I fruits. Think, um, nom, 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 nom. I think we're like we're more than two hundred episodes into this thing. I think that we can hold ourselves to a higher standard than that. Okay, but I Should will I say, say French it, toast crunch. In yeah. Travis's defense, I have had at least three experiences in the past couple of weeks since Sydney and I started listening to cereal, where she will say to me. I read the craziest thing about cereal yesterday, and I'll perk up like, "Oh, oh, jeez, <laughs> oh, well, that is a that is a favorite topic of mine." Did they Hit bring me. back? They brought back "Oops, All Berries." It's called "Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, All Berries." <laughs> I might have killed the girl. All berries. Ah, uh, shit. All berries. <laughs> oh, dunk. Where were you I when all berries. these berries happened? What if it? What if it ties back to that? Jay is like. Yeah, I totally remember. He was eating a bowl of Oops All Berries. <laughs> nope, sorry. Oops All Berries is out of circulation then. Check the calendar. It is. It was not being made then. Oh, I'm sorry. He was eating a McRib. No, he wasn't. No, he was not. He was not eating a McRib. He was listening to DC Talk. Was he or was it Switchfoot? Aw, oh, shit. All Berries. Let's do a question. Yeah, that sounds good. By the uh, way, sorry. Can I apologize to everybody that I, this is what I sound like? It, 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 you, you can hear you can hear my slimy vocal cords just slapping together, forming each consonant and vowel, and I apologize. Like a drunk seal. We had to alter Griffin's voice because he doesn't want to be identified. I don't want to be identified. I'm actually the guy from the serial show. I need to listen to more of it. My wife won a car a while back and firmly believed it had something to do with a lucky crystal she bought. I'm quit. <laughs> Ever since then, there has been an increasing number of crystals appearing around the house. Am I good? <laughs> God damn you. Ugh, fuck. You can't make me laugh like that when I got the, the consumption. You actually sound better. I feel like the crystals healed you. Oh, fuck. Thank you. Oh, it was the topaz. Mmm, it was the lustrous topaz. On an episode of uh, uh, Penn and Teller's uh, Bullshit, they say this phrase like everybody's got a grigri or something along those lines of like everybody's got a thing that like they cling to is like they're special like and I feel like this is a case of that I think if everybody were to look deep within themselves everybody has a thing where they were like oh yeah when this really good thing happened I was wearing this t-shirt so like this is my lucky t-shirt and they always kind of say it like jokingly like I'm using a tone of voice that shows that I don't really think this is serious, but I've but said it 20 shit. times today. It's so serious. But here's the thing. Can I tell you two something? I've What's never that? fucked with crystals, and I've never won a car. Yep. Mm -hmm. Justin gave me his Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra um, when he upgraded, and I guess that was free. And, you are, and uh, to be fair, you were on crystal meth at the time. Okay. I was on that crunchy Your lucky light. crystal meth. <laughs> I was on that sweet crunch, um, that oops all berries, and I did get a free car, so I take it back. Crystals are legit. They resonate at a frequency that human beings can't understand, but the Silurians can. I think that if someone says they have a lucky crystal, you should tell them they have to eat it. Because, <laughs> think about it. If it's so lucky, that should go fine. If it's so lucky... You should want it inside of you, powering your body, yeah. like uh, like that that like Krang in, mm -hmm. in that weird exoskeleton. You should want this stone, this crystal inside of you if it's so lucky. So eat it already. Eat Either that, that or crystal. she should start fighting crime or something. It's like yeah, I have a crystal so that protects me from all harm. Like cool. You need to leave here, or we're going to shoot you to death. Yeah, go ahead and try. Check out my amethyst, motherfucker. I want a car with this shit. I want a car with this, and it also makes me unkillable. <laughs> I might be leaping to conclusions. I might be leaping to conclusions here, but just try and shoot me through the topaz. You cannot, sir. This story is distinctly American. It, it, we find one crystal that has the magic power to give us cars, and we, what do we do? Are we thrilled that we found them? No. No. We start trying to scam crystals from every which way we can. Exactly. You, did you exhaust the charge on that? Like, why don't you just roll with the one lucky crystal that you found? Uh, it sounds like the reporter from Serial could use a magic topaz. And, and somebody would hand it to her and she'd be like, oh, it was Jay. 
Oh, God. <laughs> of course. The whole time it was right in front of me. It was Jay the whole time. Thank I am God I so sorry. Crystal. I just wasted everybody's time for, for, for a dozen hours trying to figure this thing out. I could have just touched this topaz and the answer would have revealed itself to me. Do you think maybe it's like a ring of keys where each, this is her lucky car crystal and then she's mm-hmm. got like a lucky job crystal and she's got like a lucky like the food order I made came back perfect crystal. Do you think she has a crystal that helps her find sweet crystals? Like oh, this is my crystal lucky crystal? crystal crystal? Yeah. This is my Crystal Gale crystal that I find rare. <laughs> crystal Gale vinyl. I think that if this is her thing, if this is like your wife's thing, there there is a saturation point where I think you get to say like, honey, the crystals, they're everywhere. We don't have money for food because you bought crystals. But I think like- I think she- that, that line is the first time you step on one. Yeah. Like the first time. The first well, time. not so lucky, it seems. It seems this one might be busted. Check the energy on it. So we call it Ghostbuster. The inner Johns in this one aren't quite matching up. Maybe we go a different way. Do you want a Yahoo? Yeah. Hit me. This Yahoo was sent in by Sarah Benson. Thank you, Sarah. You sent in a lot of great Yahoos this week, Sarah. So I feel like we should have a new segment on the show called Game Recognized Game, where people just like crush it with Yahoos. Um, Game Recognized Game, Sarah Benson. Great job. It's asked by Yahoo Answers user. Whoa, fuck. B4I, and then there's a check mark, and then U R U, and then it's slash, and then 18? That probably means some sort of sex thing. B4I, check you. This random string of gobbledygook asks Before I check you, are you slash? <laughs> Before I check you, are you 18? That's what it is. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Gross. Cool history you must have. Uh, <laughs> back, cool backstory that you have contained in a single username. This horrible goblin asks, in the Truman Show, do they film him when he's in the shower, in the toilet, or making love? Top- <laughs> topical. Because they film every second of his life, but those things are pretty big parts of everyone's life. It is certainly a big part of mine. And I don't think they'd show the whole world that. It's a pretty big plot hole. <laughs> okay. I, Are you I saying don't... it's a big plot hole, or is the question asker asking? Good morning, that? good evening, and in case I don't see you again, good night. Be right back. And then he has <laughs> diarrhea for 45 minutes. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that this is the most frustrating Yahoo Answers question we've ever had, and I'll tell you why. In the movie The Truman Show, when he is about to make love, they deal with that, and the camera pans to the curtains. It's a whole fucking scene, and they deal with it. Okay, but, 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 maybe it's sweep sweep. Oh, okay, and maybe, he wants to maybe, show full penetration. <laughs> maybe the camera operator <laughs> is asleep at the wheel, and they show full Jim Carrey penetration. His full, I, his full hot scene, rod. Oh, wouldn't it be a great scene in Truman Show if they would pulled back and the whole time there was just a camera operator standing up, pretend like I'm not here. Keep what a going. way to boost. It's a, it is an artificial way to boost ratings of, hey, guys, this week, it's shit week. We're not going to pan away when he's shitting. <laughs> we put x lax into all of Truman's meals. Enjoy. Him, Why man. am I shitting so much every week right before Christmas every year? <laughs> it's the Truman Show Christmas. Christmas special. Come around, gather around the log, kids, as Truman shits his brains out liquid <laughs> liquid waste. It's a nightmare. It's oh. beginning to look a lot like Christmas. How does it all end? Well, he's probably going to shit himself to death because you keep poisoning him. That's I, what I think. I tell you, uh, I, I, I don't know if this policy extends to self-pleasuring, but if I had been the star of the Truman Show... The years between middle of middle school and the end of high school would have featured a lot of pants. A lot of camera panning. Go ahead and secure that Better Homes and Gardens sponsorship now. Top because you are going to get some prime placement for your curtains. (laughs) Top of the credit roll will be courtesy panner. And it's just like from 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 twelve to nineteen, just like that dude is gonna earn that paycheck. Mom, why are my curtains uh, now covered with the Pepsi logo? Well, <laughs> well, because it's of funny. because of your sin. Because of your sin, you did that. How much think, of it there is? Do you think that if Truman had just turned out to be like a really boring dude, and like the show had gotten canceled, they would have murdered him? We should ask the stars of of Utopia who are currently living through this exact thing. Oh, God, guys on Utopia. First of all, I'm sorry that I canceled your television show (laughs) by talking about it on our podcast. Um, This podcast is basically the Indian in the cupboard 
of reality shows, by which I mean, if I say something happens, then it becomes real and it becomes extant. I, I have to be fucking careful with this power, with this crystal power that I've developed, mm-hmm. and not like say any shit about Survivor or Amazing Race, because I, how could I live without those? Truman, other, what other activities would the camera not be able to show if true? Like, what would you not put in the show? What if he was super racist? Super racist. And it was just like, hey, can we get, like, some good influences in there? We've tried. Like, the teachers are telling, the parents are telling. I don't know where he gets it from. I don't know. super racist. His whole life has been artificial. We've controlled every single element in his life. I do not know. It, it, has somebody been sneaking him blue-collar comedy? <laughs> has somebody Listen. been smuggling blue-collar comedy into the biodome? We never, yeah, we don't really deal with, like, Truman's super excited when he gets out. If I found out that people had filmed everything I'd done until I turned oh like 30, my God. woof, that is going to be a hard nap for me. I'm going to have to lay down for a little while and just sort of process. That would have been a way better ending of that movie if he was like, so all the jerk offs? <laughs> yup. <laughs> yep. Every single one? Because I did 3,482, <laughs> and the audience loved each and every one. And uh, also, Truman, we need to let you know there's a thing called the internet. And people have been tracking these obsessively. There are several tumblers devoted to your jerk-off schedule. How about another question? I do my laundry at the laundromat. Sometimes when I go to bump my clothes from the wash to the dryer, all the dryers have clothes in them. Some of the dryers won't even be in the process of drying the clothes. The clothes will just be hanging out in the dryer, taking up space. What's the appropriate amount of time to wait for the owner of the clothes to arrive and remove their dry clothes before you just get up, fed up? And take the clothes out and put them on the counter somewhere so you can use the dryer. That's from Ornery in Oregon. When I think about this, I think this just says a lot about me in that I just, if I encounter this problem, I think, man, I'm losing laundry today. I'll wait. Like, I just feel like the other people got there first. They did it better. And I'm I'm losing it. Well, they didn't do it better if they just leave their fucking garbage in the dryer for six days. Is that not a worry for other people? I mean, movies have made me afraid that people are going to steal my clothes out of out of the dryers. Can you imagine? It take it took me a long, long time to develop my look. You guys know this, sure. Yeah, me, of course. (laughs) My look. It took me a really long time to discover that my. weird body shape Mm -hmm. can only really truly be accommodated by v-neck t-shirts from old navy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so maybe not like a lot of work maybe a lot of initial like investigation but then i just know to buy um chunky midsection t-shirts at old navy Mm -hmm. yeah um and i spent a lot wear those like high collared t-shirts yeah and it it looked bizarre it looked bizarre it was like a melting marshmallow on a rotten stump it was bizarre that was my whole body was just all very stumpy and rotten just bad all over just sour and then you put on the old navy v-neck it was like oh that's like a neutral okay that's like a neutral where where did griffin go um and I've spent a lot of money on these $3 t-shirts. Um, can you imagine just being like, I'm going to leave my entire look and I'm going to go down the street to Chipotle for four hours and just like, good luck, clothes. Just stay right there. Don't get stole. It's, it is, it is, that's like my baby. You know what I mean? That my mm-hmm. look is everything mm-hmm. to me. And you're just, you're just potentially sacrificing that. It would take so long to rebuild that look from the ground up. It would I'm take sure me you could. 25 minutes to remember the colors of shitty V-neck t-shirts that I got from Old Navy that last for about four weeks. I just, like, I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it. This week's episode is sponsored by Old Navy. Old Navy. Their t-shirts will hide your grotesque <laughs> thorax. <laughs> Protect yourself from the prying eyes of a cruel, cruel world with Old Navy's chunky midsection V-neck T-shirts. Become instantly invisible with Old Navy's <laughs> utterly forgettable line. Just hey, $10. how come all the parts of your body are super little except for that one part of your body that's weirdly super big? Doesn't matter. Throw on this V-neck. It's pullover season too. for all the freaky bodies in America. Hey, hey, are you fat-ish? Come on. <laughs> Come on down. Come on. Get it on. One more again. We got that weird dog still and that weird old lady. We, you love them. Do you remember how much you love them? It's buy one, get six free at Old Navy. <laughs> Is this what it'll take? Uh, y'all want a Yahoo? Uh, yeah, I do, Griffin. This Yahoo was sent in by uh, Rachel Sperling, Game Recognized Game. 
Thank you, Rachel. It's by Yahoo Answers user Brian who asks, why is Peepaw so rude? So today I was at my Peepaw's household and he sneezed in my face. It's <laughs> pretty good. Then, then laughed about it. Yeah. He's always doing rude things like this and tripping me and my boyfriend when we walk by and spitting on my ferret. <laughs> The other day, he even picked his nose and wiped his booger on my clothing. <laughs> Travis Patrick McElroy. It's good. These are solid. How can we get him to stop being so rude? <laughs> Why? Spitting on the ferret is out of control. That's some next level rude grandpa technique. <laughs> you think your grandpa's rude talking about the war and, and just incessantly and talking about his friends and their sacrifices? So rude. I'll, my grandpa spits on my ferret. Fuck you. You don't know shit. <laughs> These are all good goofs. If I was my, watching this happen, I would I would lose it. Why is this ferret caked in grandpa spit? I'll tell you why. It's because my my jeeps. I I if if I uh, God willing live to an elderly age, I'm doing this. I'm hitting that point oh, where it's in like, a heart more is out the window. What are you gonna say? But like this is your kin. Yeah. Shouldn't you be nice to your to your kin? Don't you want them to remember you? I know fondly? how angry I am at people who are younger than me now. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine that's going to be compounded in the intervening decades. Yeah. Don't even be young around me. You want you want your your grandchildren to wear old person makeup when they walk in the room. Like Spike Jones style. Yeah. I think one of my favorite memories of Paw Paw is like him sitting there and just whoever else was talking in the room, talking at a level that only you sitting next to him could hear, and he mm. would just be like making fun of them or saying shit about him like, yeah, it just keeps on talking and nobody's really listening and I don't know why she keeps talking like that. I'm like, I'd like to talk, but nobody else is going to let me because she's sitting there talking so loud. And it was the best thing. It was a very subtle burn. He would very subtly spit on your ferret. He used to like, I remember one time with Papa, we rolled up to like a Taco Bell and he just kept saying like, I want an apple pie. Ask him if they have apple pie. And then looking at me and winking like, you dick. <laughs> and then mom good. would try to explain like, no, no, dad, they don't. This is Taco Bell. And he's like, but I want an apple pie. Wink. <laughs> like, you dick. <laughs> that, that's bit commitment. That's the one thing that old people have in spades, I think, is just the ability to say, I don't know if this bit's funny or not. But I'm gonna lean into it because how many more bits am I gonna get? I don't have an answer to that. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna do go whole hog. Do, do you think that Papa is the reason they started carrying empanada? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this old dude just keeps coming through and yelling about apple pies. Are we, apple pies. Are we missing a whole market? Uh, I just thought about like getting home from Papa's house and like changing into my pajamas and looking on the back of my shirt and there were boogers on it and not knowing where they came from and I got like really, really, really genuinely you got upset. got me again, people. Damn it. On this, on this episode of Serial, <laughs> we, we, we check the time on the bugs. We check them for crustiness <laughs> and also old hairs. Listen, man, who if might I have put the bug bugs, on the shirt. I don't remember it. I don't remember the bugs. I mean, who remembers every bug they ever had? 15 years later, another clue is uncovered. Yeah, there were bugs on her shirt. How did we <laughs> overlook these bugs? <laughs> no, if there had been bugs, the cops would have checked for bugs, right? Like, they wouldn't have just let bugs we didn't go. Have, we didn't have bug check technology 15 <laughs> years ago. It was the 90s. We were all doing a lot of speed. <laughs> There's no way he could have booked all those cell phone towers. <laughs> Maybe your grandfather's Alan Funt. He misses that can camera game, and this is the best goose he can cook up. Yeah. Maybe your grandma, grandpa's Alan Funt, and you never noticed. Maybe your grandpa's Carrot Top. <laughs> Mom, did you notice how grandpa got really ripped like 12 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Carrot Top. He's been ripped for longer than he hasn't been, and it's still any. All anyone can talk about. Actually, I had it's. I've talked about so many fucking other things. I had completely displaced that mental image from my mind, and now it's right back in there. So thanks, you two chuckle fucks. <laughs> Lots of important stuff in the news today, but first, Carrot Top still ripped twelve still years later. Ripped, isn't that silly? <laughs> <laughs> All right, money's up. Shit. The boys are back in town. 
Don't call it a comeback. Extreme Restraints is your place to Uh-oh. get fuck, fuck, fuck up, fuck down, fuck any way around. Don't fuck you left, clown? fuck right. Put your penis in another penis in another penis. Put your cock in your butt. Can't you do it? There's a tool for that. Extreme uh, Restraints is basically the old navy of fucking. <laughs> Extreme Restraints has the best fucks at the greatest values. It's the Neiman Marcus of fucking, I think. They're the Brooks Brothers of fucking. We want uh, uh, you to experience ExtremeRestraints.com. Uh, here are some of our favorite products. There's been wa- there's silicone kegel balls. Put these everywhere. There's put silicone the, this bagel is, balls. Step one: put them everywhere. <laughs> how much? How much would you pay for these? Well, uh, they're free. What the fuck? Free silicone kegel balls. They got internal weights that cause them to swirl and shake as you move. That's guaranteed to spice up any funeral if you're walking around with kegel balls in your vagina. Or butt. Or ears. Or butt. Or throat. Put it everywhere. Or just Don't, your pocket. Probably not your throat. Can I just say, it's been a while since we checked in on Extreme Restraints. Still one of the most fun websites to just browse. Let me the check. best. Let me see. The absolute best. If you want to just go check it out, it's the best. My net nanny actually locked me out of it. <laughs> now that I live so in that- LA, I'm going to go check out like their warehouse and their showroom, and I'm so excited. I want you to do like an infomercial from there where you're just walking around shaking people's hands. Do you like to put stuff in your butt? Sure. We all do. Hi, I'm Travis McRae. The so- stuff on ExtremeRestraints.com is so fucking crazy. That you, I, I, whenever I comb their website, I, I just, pardon me, I just realized why I've been cooking this uh, goof up in my head. I've been staring at a picture of a dick for 30 seconds. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, the, the, the things are so weird that sometimes I think that, not weird, I should say varied. Let's go with that because everybody's got to have their gree gree. Uh, s- sometimes I think that if I click on one, it'll say that's not a real one. Like when <laughs> Think Geek does their April Fool's thing. Like... <laughs> What? You, <laughs> you disgusting monster? That's not a real thing. Um, There's not really a, a remote control cock ring. Or it's something so where it's like they put it up and it's like, well, that's been out for three years and no one's clicked it. We didn't think we'd actually have to like, uh, okay, let's see. It's a thing. I, I don't know. Give us some time to workshop it. So I, I have I sword fished my net nanny and accessed the World Wide Web to go to extremist trains. And right now I'm looking at the oppressor chastity device. Uh, which is on sale. It's $119, down for $150. That's fucking huge value. Just in time for um, Christmas. Just in time for Christmas. And this device, is it looks crazy, and I couldn't understand how it could be used until I'm, I am looking at it on a dick now. Uh, put your dick in a cage, and that's essential for this chassis device. Stay in there. You did a crime. And then there's like a little containment s- s- zone for that your balls go in. Because you, they got to be contained. But then hanging off the back of the device is a rod with a ball on the end of it, and I guess that's for your butt. So it is an all-in-one device, s- sort of like the magic bullet for your dick and your balls and your whole butt. And I wore it when I won a car. So now. <laughs> Oh, there's a urethral plug, too. Every hole is catered to. Every hole. What do you need? What do you have? We got This you. is an item and I've never iPhone seen And it's iPhone compatible. Before. So it, yeah. here's, an, here's an item I've never seen before. Single locking shower suction handles. Oh. You get these wet, you put them in the shower, and you look like Mission and Cruise in the fourth Mission Impossible movie. What did I say? Mission <laughs> and Cruise. Mission and Cruise. Together again. Together again. No, you look like Tom Cruise, and they're like you. Su- you stick these onto your shower wall, and you fuck there. It's weird. I'm looking at the subcategories uh, on the side of the page, which includes bondage gear, electro sex gear, dildos, and insertables. There's a there's a, a a subcategory called fucking machines, and I clicked it, and a picture of Tom Wopat popped up. <laughs> <laughs> Just with two thumbs pointing to himself. Just pointing at himself. Which this is guy. Weird. Just a good old boy. <laughs> and here's Fuck the best thing. That moves. Right now, Monday to Monday, starting today till next Monday, 30% off everything at ExtremeRestraints.com. fuck yourself. 30% off with the coupon code BROTHERSFRIDAY, all one word. And even if you miss that, even if you get this after next Monday, it's 10% off for the rest of 2014. 
guys. I know that we highlighted some of the more extreme of these restraints, including the oppressor and Tom Wopat, but there is a lot of fun stuff on there. Basically, so maybe, for every interest level, you're going to find something that's going to find something really and spice it up. going to be dirt cheap. So go to extremerestraints.com and use the coupon code Brothers Friday to get 30% off. Please go buy this stuff so that we can keep doing these spots. They are the best sponsors still. They, it, the prodigal son hath returneth. And make sure to send us pictures of what you nope. buy. No, not while you use it. Pre-use. Or right out of the definitely box. Definitely while you use it. Nope, right out of the box. Brand new. Load up our inbox. Don't, please. <laughs> Put us on watch lists. Don't do this thing. So you fucked out. You fucked yourself out. I'm out of, guys, I just checked. I'm out of fluid. <laughs> what do you turn to when you're done watching, uh, you're done f- fucking yourself with Tom Wopat? While you consume you your power bar in, and you drink your Gatorade. You put the bag back over his head and you put him in the closet. He's done for now. <laughs> See <laughs> nah, you tomorrow, kidding, Tom. Po- poke some holes in there for Tom Wopat or he won't be there tomorrow. No. Put a twig uh, and a leaf in his container. It's so important that you recreate Tom Wopat's natural habitat. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be scared. Why do you have a, He's gonna why be do you have a cross-stitch there. pillow hanging off your bedroom closet door that says Tom's Place? <laughs> well, well Tom, there's a Tom's good place. reason for that. Tom Wopat is my fuck prisoner. <laughs> and my constant. And my constant. I love him so much. Uh, so Hulu Plus is the best way to spend your time after you have sex with Tom Wopat. Whatever you want to watch, however much time you have, like, if you have days to kill... Hulu Plus is going to be there for you. There is an insane amount of content on this website. Uh, Whatever shows that you've been missing that you want to uh, catch up on, they have a blue million of them. You want to watch all of Sybil, including the episodes of Tom Wopat? They're there. Do you want to watch the illegal banned episodes of Sybil? The Too Hot for TV episodes? That involve Sybil turning Tom Wopat into a fuck prisoner. They're there. They're all They're there. there. They're not there. They're not there. But my favorite thing, and they, I sh- like every time I turn on Hulu, I find something on there that either I've forgotten it existed or I just assumed wouldn't be out to watch yet because it was too new. And it's there. Yesterday, I found Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, which is oh, wow. it's, it's hilarious. It's like a six episode spoof on like 70s and 80s like horror shows. It is the funniest thing I've ever watched. And I haven't watched it since it was on TV. And there it is on Hulu, every episode of the season. And like, that's all I did for the rest of the day. I was like, well, this is what I'm doing. So I guarantee you it's, it's like seven ninety nine a month and the greatest value for that money. Cause you're going to find something new on there. Every time you look, um, I guess we could do an ANTM check-in, although it seems like they're fucking calming it down a little bit. Like they've actually been modeling and not like doing DNA tests and dressing up like, uh, native American robots. Mm-hmm. Um, although they did make them act, and that should just be banned from the show from this point on. No more acting. Did Aaron a, Sorkin d- leave the show? It's a, yeah. So Aaron Sorkin left the show, and now the dialogue has become extremely heavy-handed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I'm like three episodes behind. You dummy! <laughs> you, you stupid idiot! Who I have nobody else to talk. Nobody else is watching this show except for me and Rachel. We have on no the planet. On the planet. Tyra turned to the, the camera in the last episode and said, thank you, Griffin and Rachel. <laughs> and then she made everybody eat ribs for some reason. Everybody just started eating ribs at, at panel. She was like, aren't these great? If you're intrigued, you can go to HuluPlus.com slash my brother and get a whole extra week for free. There's a single week free trial if you sign up regularly. With us, you're going to get an extra week. Go to HuluPlus.com slash my brother and Boys in the house, Booch Tooch. Uh, I have a special message for Sarah and Oliver, and it's from Sean. Sean says to Sarah and Oliver, Congratulations, Sarah. I love you so much, and I'm excited to be starting a family with you. Welcome, Oliver, and I've been waiting for months for this. What's up, you cool baby? Okay. Oh, it's a baby. So the probably, baby was born. Probably it's the baby. That's a good name for a baby. It might also just be like a house guest he's been waiting for. Maybe, but probably a baby, though. Um, What if this is, what if us talking, what if this episode of the podcast is the first thing that the baby hears? I mean, with our scheduling, he's probably like three years old. 
He's probably he's probably <laughs> 19 years old. Um, but what if this baby has grown up listening to our voices and we're like, it's three daddies. Sarah and Sean, congratulations. Do it's- you know Sean is the dad? You don't. <laughs> Stop with the fucking contextual leaps, Griffin. You're going to get us in legal hot water one of these days. You're going to get Franklin and Bash to come bail us out. They're not there anymore for us. They said gotta get real lawyers. They said I'm excited to start a family with you. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's her n- uncle. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he's the wacky landlord who pops in from Maybe time to time. Maybe he's Mr. Belvedere. Maybe he's Mr. Belvedere. Did That's you think about that, Griffin? Maybe we're looking at a full Belv. Did Mr. Belvedere, like, roll up into the estate and be like, I'm your dad now. <laughs> Do you not remember the episode in which he was a sperm donor because they couldn't get pregnant? No. <laughs> No, it's I'm your daddy. On TV, but it's on Hulu Plus. Here, have some of my fancy jism. <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry, I, I, I may have missed the cup a bit. Streaks on the china, <laughs> and streaks on jism. I bet. <laughs> the secret to getting jism off your china <laughs> is a little bit of soda water and mustard. Fancy mustard, <laughs> great pepon. <laughs> <laughs> I just on the China. <laughs> I love that show. Just scrape a little jism off the China. There's a baby waiting for you. <laughs> Bob, you can you can't go to work like that. You're covered in jism. <laughs> Change your shirt. Oh, launder them. <laughs> Honey, I think we need to fire Mr. Belvedere. I'm I too think, afraid. I'm too afraid. I can hear perfectly. Decades of tantric jisming <laughs> give me the ability to hear far beyond those of mortal men. We have ruined this super sweet message that this, this person has written for a baby. So anyway, Oliver, welcome to Earth. It's pretty much like this all the time. Trav, did we have another message? We do. It's for Sean, the bandana Mitchell, and it's from Jen Rampage Hernandez. Fuck yeah. There is no chance of this getting to you on time. If there is any time left, Mary Jane loves you, and the cuckoo has left the nest. You know what to do. Godspeed. Hey, how come somebody assassinated Joe Biden yesterday? (laughs) I don't know. Uh, It must have been uh, some sort of weird sort of activation splinter cell code word. Mm. Oh, no, the wires got crossed, and he just jizzed all over Joe Biden. Oh, no. (laughs) No. Not again. He he made a Biden job. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We don't know what that message was about, but we hope it activated whoever you intended to activate. We are not legally responsible for any activation that happens on this show. We are not legally responsible for any soiling of Mr. Vice President Joe Biden. What's up? My name is Jasper Red, co-host of The Goose Down, along with the lovely Kimberly Clark, and we want to invite you into the comfort and groove of our podcast that encompasses the arts and entertainment. You can check us out at MaximumFun.org, also available on iTunes. See See ya. 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 My girlfriend has started writing a Harry Potter fan fiction with two characters loosely based on this. Well, hold on. Okay. She has told me that these two characters eventually end up dating. I'm a little worried. Will her writing reveal uncomfortable truths about how she sees me or wishes that I was? Should I stop reading now or am I worried about nothing? That's from Confundus Charmed in California. Folks, these are the kinds of questions we need. This is a perfect my brother, my brother, me question. Thank you. And then when Steve the Wizard pulled out his wand, Jenna said, sure, it's a little small, but that's okay. I still love you. It's Hey, honey, I want to talk about this paragraph. No, it's a wand. I talked about how it's phoenix feather and dragon heart string. And boy, I wish it was thicker. (laughs) Just a little bit. Um, And Steve the Wizard always chewed with his mouth open. And Sarah the Wizard hated that. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Sarah, let's talk about this. One day, Sarah the Wizard got an enchanted dagger and buried it in his fucking throat (laughs) because he couldn't keep his goddamn mouth shut. And I'm also, I'm talking to you. I mean, first of all, let's talk about the terminology because it doesn't sound like Harry Potter fan fiction. It sounds like maybe a little bit of extended universe, a little bit of EU, a little bit of uh, like Harry Potter Tales from the Moss Eisley Cantina. Yeah, canon, um, canon G. If it's perhaps. canon G, that's, that's perfectly fine. Because when you say fan fiction, I immediately think of... 
you know, a lot of Draco's throbbing member. And oh, you're thinking of slash fiction. Right, that's, that's synonymous. No, fan fiction can be completely uh, completely benign. And Oh, yeah? Just, Have you read just, a lot of that? Well, I... No, I'm, you've read a lot of, of Shadow the Hedgehog fucking Big the Cat's asshole is what you have read, sir. I love those uh, Shadow the Hedgehog Bigs the Cat slash fictions. Yeah. Oh, were you laughing because you think that's a thing that doesn't exist, or are you laughing because you know and acknowledge that that is half of all fan fiction? No, I was laughing because I get actual enjoyment from reading those, and it makes me very happy. Okay, good. I, was, I, I think that this question would be more troubling. Wouldn't you be more troubled, question asker, if she was writing two characters loosely based on you who were not dating, and instead she was dating, like, the captain of the Quidditch team? Yeah. That would be and more troubling. And you thought that was you, and then it turned out the captain of the Quidditch team had, like, a weird mole that you don't have. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Wait That's a minute. That's not me. Our neighbor Jerry has a mole, though, and he's great at Quidditch. <laughs> God damn it, Jerry. <laughs> Please Bye, don't take Jerry. her just because you can. I'm sorry. I can't catch the golden snitch. <laughs> His snitches are beyond compare. <laughs> His mole is covered with gross hair. <laughs> oh, Jesus. With ivory skin and dragons of emerald green. <laughs> okay. I, this sucks on a lot of different levels. Isn't this a great test of, like, a relationship? That first time someone hands you their fan fiction. Their manuscript. How you react to that will determine the course of your love forever. Can I say, you guys, like, I secretly think I would enjoy the hell out of writing fan fiction. What I universe would, would you want like to dip into? What? What universe would you want to dip into? What? If I had to write fan fiction yep. in a universe, which one would I want to inhabit? Yes. I mean, I wrote a spec office script once, which was basically this. Yeah, was, so that maybe like that was basically fan well, that fiction, was a, right? that was potentially for a job, and it was a yeah, good right, yeah, yeah. But is it yeah, all yeah, fan yeah. fiction until someone pays you for it? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, when when J.K. Rowling wrote the original Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, that was actually Dune fan fiction. Not a lot of people mm -hmm. know that. Very she little details had to change. House House Atreides was just House Gryffindor. They just changed the name uh -huh. up. Oh, yeah. I think I would want to dip into Quantum Leap. It's so it's such a rich My vein. God, what yeah. can't you do? Uh, I would write the hell out of some Quantum Leap. Fan oh, fiction. I want to do one where he leaps into Santa Claus. Travis, that's a fucking good idea. Thank you, Justin. Oh, and who's Batten partnering down the hatches. up with? I'm ready who's to partnering up with Doctor Who. I'm gonna go uh, actually run into the run into the bedroom really quick and grab Rachel's laptop and read you guys some of her Quantum Leap slash fiction that she's written. <laughs> Because that is her favorite show of all time. Oh, boy! Yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving! I'm leaving! I know what you're thinking. There's a lot of hologram sex involved. And you know what I'm thinking. That you're absolutely right. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Swiss cheese memory and an ass like Gruyere. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't. She still manages to write in a scene where Scott Bakula gets to sing, though. Because it's in his writer. <laughs> I'll let you, I'll fuck a physical manifestation of Ziggy, and I'll have hologram sex, too. But you gotta let me dress up like the big bopper. Okay, Scott. That is an yeah. ironclad contract when he anticipated slash fiction. Yep. In case, like, 25 years from now, people are writing on the internet about me having sex with Ziggy, I have to sing in those, in to those stories. Sing. Come on, Donald Belisario. <laughs> you want me? <laughs> I've talked about this before, but how fucking good would like an adventure game series set in Quantum Leap be? I think about it and I get so excited. I could write that. Is that is that fan fiction? Are I'm you about it? Telltale. Are Telltale you are you talking about like a video game you. scenario or like a board yes. game card game scenario? No, no, no. Board, video game scenario. Be so fucking tight. I would write it for free. You could make any game into a Quantum Leap game by just having a scene at the beginning where he leaps. Like, there's very few distinguishing features of it other than the leaping. It's not like he gets super strength or anything cool like that. You could do it right now just by editing in, like, scenes into video games where, like, just for one second he looks at the camera and says, like, oh, boy. And then you just keep going. And you're like, Holy, wait, hold on. Wait Is a this second. a Quantum Leap game? Is Goldeneye uh, a Quantum Leap game? Did we talk about Quantum Leap sl slash uh, fan fiction enough that we'll actually be forced into making some? Because I really want to write some fan fiction. Isn't everyone just looking for an excuse to write some fan fiction? Like, I guess. I guess we I need would. to do a Patreon where we just write quantum. Leaf. I got to do it. It's for the donors. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I don't want to be writing fan fiction. Uh, this Yahoo was sent in by Level Seven Hundred 
Yahoo Shaman, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's by Yahoo Answers user Joe, who asks, Chris Angel versus Santa Claus. Ooh. Who is more magical? Mm-hmm. I don't want to ruin it, but I'm going down through the dozens of responses to this question. Dozens of people who decided that this is going to be worth their while. Uh, it is almost entirely Chris Angel. Almost all in Chris Angel's corner. Serious question. Yeah. If it Who's, was revealed that mm. Chris Angel was some kind of like sucky incubus character, some kind of actual like demon person, would mm. you be shocked at all? If he was some sort of Nephilim? Yes. If it turned out that he was like an agent of Mephistopheles and like had some unearthly powers. If it turned out he was an agent of Mr. Mistopheles. <laughs> if he was a ring. jellical cat. If it turned out that he was a jellical cat and ascended to the heavy time layer, whatever it's called, would you be shocked? Sent, let me see. I'm going to show you a trick. Hand me those sardines. <laughs> love them. I love these things. I love them shits. Now watch this. I'm going to put his sword through my belly. Now, Look I'm, at that sand over there. You see how smooth and not chunky that sand is? Give me a second. Check this out. Poopy poop poop poop. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Did you like my magic? My vip. Check out that laser pointer. You want to say, uh, hold on. Uh, hey, put me there. Yeah. Um, can, I, can I tell you guys something? This it, is the truth. Yeah. When I was t- uh, a young child, I saw uh, David Copperfield on TV performing his uh, illusion of flight. Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps one of you could Wikipedia that to find out the exact year and the name of that special because it was something amazing. But I watched his illusion of flight. And in my young mind, as a, as a young boy... I entertained, seriously entertained, for the span of a few days afterwards, that David Copperfield may, maybe, maybe, an angel. I thought, (laughs) wait, now don't laugh. No, I'm going to, fuck you. (laughs) No, I thought that David Copperfield, in his special, his flight 1992. Perfect, 12, that's exactly where I thought I was. I, I, and what was the name of that special? Do you, do you have that on hand? Uh, the Magic of David Copperfield 14, flying hyphen live the dream. Calm the fuck down, David <laughs> Copperfield. Good name, Davey. So I was so stumped by how he did this trick. Mm-hmm. I entertained that he was an angel who has, was on earth to re convince the people that miracles can happen. <laughs> I thought that David Copperfield was perhaps an angel, and that was the best explanation. Can I just say, like, it being the 90s, I'm amazed that that wasn't, like, a movie or a TV special or something where it's like, you know who's popular right now? That David Copperfield. People love the angels and stuff, so let's make it where he's really doing magic and solving crimes. That was was actually the finale of The Secrets of Magic Revealed, the the masked magician who's, like, putting everybody on blast, like, and here's the secret behind David Copperfield. He's a fucking angel, guys. Like I, I fucking, I've looked at that shit through every angle, and this guy's a motherfucking angel. I have no idea. Why can't we see his halo? That's the great magic trick. He made that shit disappear. He must have linked it with another ring and then pulled it off his fucking head. It's he actually angel. had to sa- he had to give up his halo when he revealed his abilities to Earth people. Is that how it works? In my fan fiction. <laughs> Yesterday, my roommate of five plus years walked into my room and asked to borrow my nail clippers like it was the most normal thing in the world. I had two questions for you guys, but first, the, but the answers were real obvious. Is that okay? No. How do you say no to that? No, you may not use my nail clippers. <laughs> the real question at the root of this is, how do I figure out what other weird stuff he thinks is normal? And that's from, well, please don't use my nail clippers in Pittsburgh. First off, thanks for handling our light work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think it's that weird. What? What? Nail cl- the nail clipper borrowing? So- yeah. Sorry, what, Travis? Yeah. I know. I feel That's like a- I should, but like I think if, if Brent in college had walked into my room and said like, hey, can I borrow your nail clippers? I wouldn't have thought twice about it. I would have just I, handed it I to use- her and said, here you go, good friend. Okay, but when I use nail clippers, I don't just like clip my nails. I get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get. I mean, I do some work in there, some reconstructive work. Yeah, you get out the 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 speculum. 
Mm -hmm. that's one of the attachments, isn't it? So Mm -hmm. is the Mm -hmm. fear that, okay, is the fear like, A, that their feet are so gross you're going to catch something from like their fingernails or their toenails? It doesn't matter, Travis, why do I have to spell this out for you? Like, they're nail clippers. Uh Uh-huh. It's gross. Everything, and you're worried about the feet, I'm more worried about the hands. Because everything you ever touch, including your butt hole, is going to get under there. And then it's going to get on there, and then it's going to get on your shit when you touch it. Uh, what kind of honey pots of items can you leave around the house just to see if he will pick them up and utilize them? And make yourself look like a chair as you like document it and be like, okay, he used my okay. toothbrush. I need to move out. And now you're sitting on me. You jerked off on my china. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty weird. <laughs> it's not explicitly what that's for. But wish you'd jerk off on your own china. Why do we have two sets of china in our college apartment? I don't know. One's real streaky. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Uh, we we hope you've enjoyed recording it with us. Weird, because they didn't do that. <laughs> no, they're all here with me. Enjoyed... They've just been really quiet. I'm on some meds. There. All right. It's out. I'm on some fucking meds. I, I've been sick what are you for... On? A fucking quill. I've been sick for a week and a half. I've become like a fucking cough syrup sommelier. Mmm. I believe this is a this is a mm, generic brand of Walgreens Day Quill, and there's like an earthy sort of mm, acetaminophen. Mmm. Delicious. I love it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for listening to our show. We hope you had fun. Um, listen. Thank you to people on Twitter tweeting about the show. People like. Roller Girl, James Gowdy, uh, uh, Pee Wee, Scotty Moe, Hillary Fink, Neil, Louisa Heron, Taylor Bear, The Doctor, Diana Nock, Katie Shackelford, Chloe Chef, RJ Moore, Pluto, so many others. We really appreciate it. We're at MBNBAM on Twitter if you want to follow us there or tweet about the show or whatever. And just a heads up so you don't miss it. Tickets for Max FunCon go on sale after Thanksgiving. And they always sell out, and it is always, like, the most fun time. It is a solid weekend of good time. You will never be more exhausted in your life than you are Sunday afternoon. So make sure to go get your tickets. It's gonna, we can't tell you who's going to be there. Like, we don't even know yet. The lineup doesn't drop till after, like, long after tickets go on sale. But trust me, it's always a solid lineup. Last year, I think Michael Ian Black was there. I, Kyle Kinane was there two years ago. John Hodgman's, like, almost always there. Maria Bamford, go, it's always a I solid think, uh, lineup. I think Jesse tweeted, Jesse tweeted that, uh, uh, this is Max Fun uh, boss, Jesse Thorne. He tweeted that uh, you would be well served to bring some farm wisdom. Uh, with you. So take that how you will. Said. I don't know what he meant by that. I think Kamal and Emily from the Indoor Kids were there last year. They were. They're, and from they're, what I understand, killed it. There's classes, yeah. there's a comedy show, there's parties, you're going to make some new friends, you get to hang out with everybody who's there. It is like a solid good time. We love going. So make sure to get your tickets. Don't miss out. And yeah, it's it may be a trek for some people, but it's once a year and it's worth it's it. It's a trek for everybody. It's at the top of the top goddamn of the fucking mountain. mountain. It's at the goddamn throat of the world. Literally, it is at the throat. There is a high school there called Throat of the World High School. Not Throat of the World. I think it is. What what is it? Rim uh, of the world, top here. of the world, edge rim of the world. Rim of the world. Rim of the world sounds good. I think at world's rim. I think it's Fusroda University. Mm-hmm. Um. I would like to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters, both of them, for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, if you haven't listened to that album in fullness, I feel like we still get tweets every week like, oh, man, this is a good CD. Yeah, no shit. I know. Also, why are you buying CDs? Yeah. I, went to, I, I just went to Sam Goody, and I'm listening to this great compact disc. Oh, I dropped my mic. <laughs> <laughs> We got a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash mbmbam. We just crossed 5,000 subscribers there. Yeah. And we want you to be 5,000 and change or whatever. Maybe be the 5,000 a month. I don't know. And if, if you, you like the videos, the best way to get the word out is to just like share it on your Facebook or tweet about it. I, I keep seeing people who like, like the videos and say, like, why are more people watching these? Because we need you to show them to people. And I guarantee, it, like, there's so many shorts up now. And if you haven't watched the animated videos, that Tyler Crowley has been making, they are the fucking best. And do we have a new one coming up this week? We do. There's a new one coming out Friday. You're going to love it. Are we done? No, also, check We're out done. all the other Max Fun shows. They're all great. Oh, yeah. 
Um, oh, hey, we're doing a live show in Huntington. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, got, you go to bit.ly forward slash Candle Nights Live, uh, and you can get tickets to see my brother, my brother, and me. Uh, we, I know we sold yeah. over half the tickets. Uh, they are they are selling uh, briskly, I would say. I think that's fair to say. They're selling briskly, so you want to go pick those up. They're just 15 bucks. Uh, uh, Sawbones will be opening for my brother, my brother, me, so you can get two podcasts at the price of one. It's a, and... it's a holiday special titled The Magic of the McElroy Brothers 14 Flying Live the Dream. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to miss it. We've got people coming in. I just found out. I saw a tweet about it coming down from Delaware, coming down from New Jersey, and coming in from Pennsylvania. So, like, this may be the we biggest tourism event in. Huntington has ever had. We have people coming in from Canada and Switzerland. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Just like get there. Uh, um, and that's going to do it for us. Cool, Griffin, cool, cool. Do you have one last uh, Yahoo question? I for, do. To chew on? This final Yahoo is sent in by Rachel Sperling. Thank you again, Rachel. It's by Yahoo Answers user Greg, who asks. Was Jeremy Pearl Jam arrested for the stuff he did in the video? <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother. May you kiss your dad, school, on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hi, my name's Dave. And my name's Graham. Now, what do we have to do to put you in a brand new podcast today? Yeah, what do you want me to drink bleach? I'll do it. Yeah, Dave will drink bleach. If that's what it takes to get you to listen to Stop Podcasting Yourself on MaximumFun.org. Don't make Dave drink bleach. Just listen to the show. (sighs) He will, but don't make him. Stop podcasting yourself. 